But you're about to see a passionate, dedicated, and trained people practicing and preparing to enter an extreme sporting event that may change their lives. Do not try this on your own without necessary experience and supervision. Breathe in, breathe out. This moment's what it's all about. Born to be great, your gold away. Don't hesitate. Accelerate. Set for the race. Aim to give it all I got. Mind is set. Gonna reach the high spot. Working hard in order to fulfill my goal. Nothing can stop me from getting what I'm going for. That's been great. I was working till the same. Gotta get to first place. Hands on the golden plate. I concentrate. Won't hit the brake. Just move forward. Accelerate. Welcome back, accelerators. Last week, we saw 16 year old equestrian rider Kelly and her trusty companion Trust Fund hurdle their way to a few rosettes for their local pony club event. Today, we meet two new accelerators and find out how they prepare for their upcoming event. We meet 15-year-old tennis prospect Robbie Irons. Tennis is a racket sport played against a single player or teams of two. Played on a rectangular court separated by a net. Tennis involves hitting the ball over the net to your opponent and returning serves until the first player is unable to reply or the ball lands out of the designated area. We also meet 15-year-old figure skater Mia Erasmus. Figure skating is an individual sport, but can also be performed in a group. The sport involves a skating routine, which has elements of dance and gymnastics that is choreographed to music, and may include moves such as spins and jumps. So let's meet these two awesome accelerators as they prepare for their upcoming events. My name is Robbie Orange. I'm 15 years old. I'm grade 10, and I play tennis. I uh, stay in Cape Town with my parents and my sister. I uh, started playing tennis at the age of three. Um, when I was small, like two years old, um, I used to go watch my parents play senior league. And then the members at the club used to throw tennis balls at me and I used to practice shots. And then, and then from there, it just grew. Uh, my first competition I participated in was at the age of five. I love tennis so much because it's just the feeling when I play it. I just love it so much. When I'm playing tennis, my, um, I feel alive. The adrenaline rush is, I feel emotional, passion when I'm on the court. I first knew I wanted to become a professional tennis player as, as soon as I started playing tennis. That's what I was working for since I started. My future plans for this sport is I want to become a professional tennis player. At the moment, I'm just trying to focus on my tennis. My biggest dream in life is to become number one in the world. Mm. To um, complete that dream, I'm going to be playing a lot of ITF and hopefully ATP tournaments to get enough points to become number one in the world. And ITF is under 18 and ATP is men's open. The event I'm practicing for is the um, Western Province Classic Slashinger Tournament. This event is so important to me because this could really help my ranking and push it up. If I win this event, my ranking would move up by one spot, which is quite nice, and I've never won one of these events before. If I lose the event, um, the people behind me could catch up to me and I could lose my spot. My name is Mary Smith and I am in grade 9 and I do figure skating at this sport. I stay in Mufferstown in the Western Cape with my mom, dad and sister. I started figure skating when I was 8 years old and my mom took me to the small record once and I really, really liked it. I asked if I could start lessons and then I started with the club. When I'm on the ice I feel like everything around me is gone. I don't think of anything else than what I'm going to do now and all my focus stays on there's nothing else outside. You don't notice the people, you feels like you're free and flying, you can do what you want to. 
My future plans and aspiration for this sport is to go to Junior Worlds and to get the qualifying score for that. But you have to focus on your school as well. You can't just do skating because you have to have a make a living after skating. I am preparing for the Cape Interprovincial Figure Skating Championship. This event is very important for me because I'm trying to qualify my programs for nationals next year. And I really don't want to miss the competition. If I were to get a gold medal, I would be very happy and satisfied. But if I don't, it doesn't matter because it's still just having fun. Even though it's a competition, you must enjoy yourself. After the break, we continue with Mia and Rabi and find out what it takes for them to prepare for their upcoming events. In the meantime, feel free to check out our Facebook page where you can comment, like, and tell us about the sports that you do. Welcome back to Accelerate. We are gliding around the ice rink with 15-year-old figure skater Mia and we're serving up some volleys on the court with 15-year-old tennis player Ravi. They're showing us what it takes to compete in their upcoming provincial events. Let's check it out. The basic rules of tennis, you have to keep the ball in the perimeter of the court, so within the white lines and over the net. An average tennis match can last up to one to one and a half hours. The scoring works like um, there's, you have to win six games to win a set. And you, if it's a best out of three sets, you need to win two sets to win the match. If it's a best out of five sets, you need to win three sets to win the match. Um, in a normal ATP tournament, it's best out of three. But if it's a Grand Slam, it's best out of five. A Grand Slam is the biggest tournament of the year. There's only four of them. Um, when you're scoring like 15 love means you won the first point of the game. 30 love means you won two points in the game. 40 love is three points. And then if you win the fourth point, it's game. So that means you got one game. A set is the uh, six games that you win. Um, tennis is a very expensive sport. Like um, coaching can cost up to eight to 10,000 Rand a month. Gear that I use would be after, with a, is a racket, tennis racket, uh, tennis balls, shoes, and strings for the racket. So you get different kinds of strings. You get strings for spin, durability, or power. Uh, the risk associated with tennis is you could get injured and be out for a long time. Uh, you could like um, tear muscle in your shoulder or in your leg, and then that will put you out for a long time. Or you can maybe just fall and knock your knee out of place. My fears for the sport is um, getting really badly injured that I can't carry on playing tennis and that it doesn't work out for me. Some of the equipment used in the sport are um, skate guards, your skates and your blade protectors. Okay, so your blade protectors is made that you can walk around on the tile floors and not damage your blades because if the if your blades get damaged you can't skate some of the basic rules of the sport is landing on one leg being presentable and smiling for the judges enjoy the sport so some of the gears for competition is your dress and your skates and your stockings and then your makeup, your hair and you, how you present yourself. So some of the risks associated with my sport is concussions and um, breaking your leg or your arm from falling and back injuries and knee injuries very common in the sport. I've also been injured in the sport. I broken pieces off of my elbow twice on each elbow and I cracked my coccyx <laughs> and 
I hit my own blade into my hand. It's not, I don't really get scared. I just think if I see it, I know I mustn't do that. I know I have to fix whatever I'm doing wrong to prevent that from happening to me. Playing tennis takes a lot of dedication from my parents because they, they take me to my practices, they take me to my uh, matches, tournaments. They help get my stuff ready for whatever I need. The positive impact that the sport has on our family life, it, it keeps us out. We're outdoors, we're around healthy, competitive environments. If the kids aren't in malls, they're exercising, they're getting fresh air, they're learning a discipline. That's the positive positive impact it has on our family life. Yeah. The negative impact that the sport has on our family life would be that, especially around festivities, Christmas time, birthdays, the children miss a lot of those celebrations. The day before Christmas they were playing a final of a, of a tennis tournament while other people were wrapping presents. So that's probably the only negative impact. A tennis season goes all year through. Occasionally in June, when it rains a lot, there aren't tournaments, but basically February coming up, there's a tournament every weekend. So it runs all the year through, and tournaments, the local tournaments, they'll start on a Friday after school, half past two, and they will go through till Sunday if there's doubles, possibly till four or five in the afternoon. As with any sport, there's a risk of injury with tennis. Um, the best we can do is condition the kids, make sure they do their stretching, the cool down afterwards, and you know, just prepare them for it. Uh, my dad's been coaching me since I was three, so he's my main coach and he always takes time out to talk to me. Um, the reason I think Rob is good at the sport, I think because he's, he's very competitive and um, I think because me and his mom and most of our friends all play tennis. And I think he's around tennis all the time, so I, I suppose that's why he excels at, at tennis, because he's around him all the time. I'm very happy with Rob's dedication to his training. He's proven to us in the last year that he's willing to work hard at his game, and he's, very, he's become more of a professional uh, about the way he approaches tennis. He's got an awesome program at the moment. He's got some great coaches around him that is helping him with his fitness. This facility was created as a pure high performance academy. The objective is to make sure that if there's any kid out there who is talented, hungry, and deserves to be here, he's gonna get that opportunity in South Africa. And that, that was the purpose and goal. So that we're gonna give every child who deserves the opportunity and who should be here. He must be here. And that kid's going to get the chance to become the next African champion. And that's what this facility is, was, is about. And that's what we're here for. And that's what we're focused on. The upcoming event, the Slazenger Classic for Robbie, it's only a measure for him. It's a time for him to develop his competitive skills before he goes out into the international world. So. These local events are, are really great for the younger kids in terms of them being able to learn competitive skills by competing. Robbie is now beginning to understand that if he's going to be a, a professional tennis player one day, this part of his this is just first part, first steps of his development. So we're not going into this tournament. I don't. I'm not interested if he wins or loses it. I'm interested in that he goes into this tournament and that he feels for himself that, hey, I can deal with this level, I'm good enough, I can do this, I can go internationally and play. If um, Rob doesn't do well in the event, it's, we don't really, we, we, we probably pick up the piece and say, oh, we've got to go back to the drawing board and fix things. That's basically, and it's always, a, I reckon you're always something to learn. They always learn stuff from a, a bad event. If you have a bad event, you come back strong the next one. This sport requires a lot of dedication from my parents because some mornings you skate at five o'clock and my mom needs to take me and then it's less time for them to get ready because I need to get ready and then 
They get home late at night and it would be really tiring, but they'll still do it for you. We all have to family to learn our time very good to bestuur. I um, got a very good time for us. And this has also taught us that early on is important. We don't have to worry about it. We have to learn a bit more to spare, because Ice is a dear sport. And this is for me a very discipline. We learn how to listen. And this is for us important to learn that our kids belong to something that is productive and active. Even if we are in the street with our mates. I am not too worried that I have too much aandag op my kind sit by die baan nie. Sy het in die begin was dit al probleem om elke keer op te kyk na my toe as sy een sprong gedoen het om te kyk of ek ook so gelukkig wees met wat sy gedoen het en dit het al aandag nogal afgetrek en as ouwe het ek vinnig vinnig besef dat dit kan, dit kan een probleem wees en ek het my rug begin draai op waar sy skaats en ek het met mense begin gesels en in die stel gaan sit ek selfs buiten want ek voel sy weet wat sy doen, haar africhters weet wat sy doen en sy sal nou self recht beheer en gedraap die baan, so ek hoef nie heel dag oor al te sit en te kyk wat sy doen nie. Sy is oud genoeg. Wanneer hy jonger is, is dit baie belangrik vir die ouwe om daar te wees. As hy nie seer krij, dan wil jy daar wees om vinnig te sien of al iets is wat jy moet doen of het belangrik is. Maar soos hulle ouwe woord besef hulle self wanneer die tyd is om hulle maat te roep. So, my main coach is Danton Bertrijk en he helps me to design my program and how, with, where, what's going to be and what I'm going to do in my program. Mia is good at the sport because she puts in a tremendous amount of time and effort into what she's doing. Early mornings, late nights, um, floor practice, scattering long hours on the ice, um, all of this in the hope of you know, being the best and achieving the best results in the competitions and in the sport. The upcoming event is very important for Mia because she's trying to qualify for the national championships and this event is um, a, an important one for her. She is trying to qualify for the novice ladies division so she has to do a short program and a free program so she has a certain score criteria which she needs to achieve during both these um, programs and so that is what our goal is for this competition right now. If Mia doesn't uh, achieve the goals that she set out for, we will go back to the drawing board and reassess what it is that we need to do it and what we need to improve on in order for her to achieve her goals. After the break, we'll continue with Mia and Rodney. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, like us, and maybe connect with other accelerators. Guys, this is Accelerate. We are racking it up with 15-year-old tennis player Rabi and sharpening our skates with 15-year-old figure skater Mia. They have some epic competition in their upcoming provincial events. Can they prep themselves in time and come out tops? On Tuesdays, I practice for five hours, but I'm there for seven hours. On a Thursday, I practice three hours, but I'm there for four hours. And on Fridays, I practice two and a half hours. And on Sunday mornings, I practice three and a half hours. The way I manage my schoolwork and sport activities is I do my most of my schoolwork at, at school, and then I go to skating, and then I'll do some work there, and I'll come home, and if it's not done yet, I'll do it here but most of the time I do it at school. So one of my biggest achievements that I had is I placed first in Western Province Championship and I got chosen to go to France. And I went to France and it was an amazing experience. Then I also got chosen to go to Croatia, but I declined that chance because it was in my final exams. The biggest lesson this sport has taught me is to be confident and don't be negative of anything because anything is possible if you try. At the moment, I spend 20 hours a week 
but this year I would like to spend up to um, six hours maybe a day on the court because I want to try and improve my game and get better. I would like to improve the mental aspect of my game and I would like to improve my forehand. I have another child who's devoted to the sport. Her name is Kelly. She's 13 years old and she's currently the number one in her age group in South Africa. Um, we sometimes, we flip a coin. <laughs> I'm joking. Like, um, Robbie's a little older. He's, I've been through most of those phases with him. So one needs to will sometimes follow him wherever he's going. And I have to follow Cal. Because she more, she's more insistent <laughs> that I follow her where she goes. When it comes to micromanaging the kids in their tennis, in the beginning when they were very young, we had to help them pack their water bottles, their bags beforehand, and enter them in tournaments. But now that they're older, they know, I'll say Robbie and Kelly, and they've pre prepped their bags for the, the, the following day, the water bottles, and I discuss with them what tournaments are you going to enter? Are you sure? Can your schedule accommodate it? And then they make the final decision. Uh, my schoolwork in tennis, they balance because I work on my game during the week, I practice, and then on the weekends when I have extra time, I, I catch up with all the schoolwork that I miss. The future aim for Robbie, we, we'd like him to go pro. He'd like to um, go onto the pro circuit and give it a good go. He wants to do it 100%, so we're going to back him 100%. There is a timeline and a plan. We'd like to try and make sure he try and maybe get onto the ATP tour by 18 and he'll have at least two or three years to see if he can break it, make it or break it. If he begins to play international tournaments like ITF, let's see you win two, three, four of those tournaments, grade fours or fives, and then we'll go play the next level. And if we can win matches in the next level, then maybe then maybe we're ready to start playing higher level. And then let's see if we reach top 100 in the world. Now, if Robbie reaches these benchmarks, this will be a sign that we are in the right direction and that there is justification to, for the investment and the continuation. So it's not about predicting. It's about achieving these benchmarks which show reality and show justification for continuation. The biggest lesson the sport have taught me is discipline and to be humble and to focus. Next week, me and Chills right from the ice. So we'll see Robbie serve up some awesome shots in his provincial competition. See you next week. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page for more news and feeds.